Hello, everyone. Recording. Well, I'm so pleased to welcome back to the show, Monty Richings. Richings. <laughs> Sorry, Monty. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one that stutters and makes mistakes when oh. you're talking. I'm fine, Nancy. Great to see you again. <laughs> They're not. You know, it, it, it just it proves th that we're human. Yes. And that's but, a whole part. Whole not really, they're not really mistakes, Monty. They're creative glitches. There we go. I like that. Can I use that one? Yeah, please. <laughs> I probably stole it from somebody. <laughs> we're going to have lots of creative glitches today because we're, we're doing this ad lib. Exactly. So for the audience, I just want to let you know that um, Monty does a lot of things. He's an author. Um, um, I've forgotten all of some of the things. But what we're going to talk about today is, first of all, he's an adventurer in a couple of ways. Um, has traveled to many different uh, countries across the world. And uh, he's also uh, very into um, adventure in the mind. So that's where we're going to explore, I think. Right, Monty? Absolutely. So Absolutely, Nancy. Okay, so let's go with, just take it away. Okay. Well, I, I've, I've been having some interesting realizations. Uh, uh, I, I've started putting some webinars together that I'm going to start offering. And they're they're based on what we call the mind body relationship and a realization that i had this morning was very profound and it really shifts the way that i think about it is it's it's not truly a mind body relationship that that's kind of what we would call exoteric talking mm -hmm. uh what it actually is it's a relationship between our inner self and our outer self mm -hmm. And, and that's a really key thing because when we deal with it as a mind-body relationship, th this is a part and we're going to talk about that as well today. When we talk about the mind, we're often talking about the workings of the ego. And, and because the, and I'm going to explain a lot to do with this today too. The, but uh, when, when we're only dealing with the mind-body relationship, we're, we're still staying on the mundane plane, the, the plane that we live on. And what is happening is with the changing of the energies that are we're part of now, um, I think we went into this a little bit when we talked last time, is that we are moving into the age of Aquarius. And we are in the cusp. Uh, a cusp is about 350 years. Uh, and we're about 50 years into the cusp, which is the transition between the age of Pisces and the age of Aquarius. And, and one of the, the significant, it's a huge difference between how we lived in the age of Pisces and what we'll do in the age of Aquarius is the recognition of the non-physical self. So in, in, in our, our times that, you know, we, we were all born in the age of Pisces, just barely, because uh, the, the, the age of Pisces, act, or the age of Aquarius started having influence in about the mid 60s. And we, we got in just before that. Uh, so uh, an age is 2000 years long. So the, the, uh, the age of Aries is the time when we talk about in history where we're talking about the 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 the, the, the Greek the, the Greek empires and the Roman empires and the Egyptian empires and all that. That was about basically administrative control. And towards the end of, of the Old Testament, uh, they talk about the killing of the ram. And that was the, the ram is the symbol of Aries. And when the ram was killed was the significance uh, is, is that that was the beginning of the energy of the cusp of moving into the age of Pisces. So interestingly enough, I realized this the other day. I'm not a Bible person, but I use it as a, as a reference. Most of the Bible was written around 300 AD, which is the beginning of the age of Pisces. The, interesting how this stuff works, eh? So, and, and Jesus was born at the beginning of the cusp of Pisces. And so he introduced the energy of what was going to happen in Pisces. And the, the people that wrote about him in the Bible were actually in the age of Pisces. So the, the age of Pisces is now ending. Uh, and, and that's why, it, you know, and, and, and in all truth, it is the fault of a band called the Fifth Dimension. If you remember back in the 1960s, they came out with a song called The Dawning of the Age of Aquarius. So it's all their fault. Wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for that song. 
So anyway, so now we're moving into the age of Aquarius. The age of Aquarius, the way that, uh, until, until I realized this today, what they've talked about is that in the age of Pisces, we basically work with our mind and our hands together. The Pisces, the Pisces symbol is hands. So in the age of Pisces, we invented stuff. We traveled and we figured out the world and we figured out life according to the way our mind perceives it. Mm. We didn't include heart in that. Mm. And this is where the transition is happening is that we are now being asked to include heart in what we're doing. And that's why you do podcasts, because that's a heart thing for you. Yeah. Uh, and I write books and, and whatever other people are doing. So, but the, the, the explanation I got today made more sense is that we, the way that we are created and have always been created, and it's true of all animals and, and plants as well, is we have two, two aspects to ourselves. We have a soul and we have a physical body. And everything else is caused by the combination of those two coming together. Um, an explanation that, that works really well is if you have a lamp, the lamp is an ornament until you put electricity to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The electricity is of absolutely no value until you put it to work. Right. And this is what the Holy Trinity is, is that the, the Holy Trinity is created by turning the lamp on. So you've, you've got the lamp, the electricity, and the joining of the two. Right. That's your Bible lesson for today. <laughs> and and that, that, that is not just true from, from the biblical stuff. That's true of anything. Right. You know, if, if, if you don't eat food, you're missing that that second part. You can't have the third part, which is called life. Right. So it, it's a very basic part of it. So what what we are starting to understand is is this relationship between the non-physical self or the, the soul mm -hmm. and the physical self and what happens when the two are put together. Okay. And that's what the age of Aquarius is about. So, so my my focus in writing and in the, in the in the webinars that I'm going to be doing and in my in my websites uh, is about helping people to understand that we have always been that way. We the the, the Holy Trinity has always existed since since, since God created this business, uh, and, and and it will always be. So, but what we need to do now is be conscious of the fact that. That is the way that life is created. And we need to give more recognition to our non-physical self. Uh, so basically, the, the, I'm going to get into a whole lot of trouble for this, but I'm going there anyway, because it, it's been, been one of my major focuses over my life in, in, in my studies is about how we view our bodies because we learned it from the medical industry. The, the medical industry will only recognize that we have a body. Mm -hmm. They don't really recognize the impact of our mind on our body. Yeah. I believe that virtually all diseases are caused by incorrect thinking. And that if we correct that thinking, we can heal whatever the issue is. And uh, I, I have a, a, a prime example of it. A couple of months ago, I, I was working with a, a lady that does body code, uh, which is a he, uh, an energetic healing process. And when I started talking to her I, for a couple of days, my, my top right molar up here had been really, really sore and it was abscessed and whatever like this. So she asked me how I was doing. And I mentioned that this, this tooth was really bothering me. So she focused on it and, and we got into what the emotional play was going on with that. And by the end of the session, that, that tooth was healed and I've been fine ever since. I did a session with her a couple of months later ago or after, and my right knee was bothering me. And she started checking on it. She said, you know, those are in the same meridian. So they're all connected together. Mm -hmm. and, and so by looking at our body beyond the body we can start looking at the causes of our illnesses when, when we deal with the traditional medical system they deal with symptoms mm. and they get really really annoyed when you start talking this cause thing 
because because it's not in their parameters to deal with it. E- even a lot uh, a lot of or, uh, ones like the uh, uh, massage therapists and chiropractors and naturopaths and so like that. Still, as far as I'm concerned, they're much better than general doctors, but they don't go far enough because they don't deal with that that. Yeah. non-physical physical body relationship yeah. uh, w- w- one of the things that I, I did and this has been another realization I'm going to work on now too is when I was a client at the WCB back in uh, workers compensation board back in 1997 I think it was I'd flipped the tractor trailer over and broken six ribs in my back and I it hurt uh i i became good friends with one of the physios at wcb and we got talking about working with people who are uh amputees and she happened to work in the in the amputee ward at, at wcb and and so i asked her i said can we or can would you consider finding somebody that is a client there and that is willing to do an exercise with me and see if we could deal with their pain and because you have two types, you have the phantom pain and then you have the stump pain. OK, so she, she said, OK, so she went and she found a fellow and he was uh, a snag faller, uh, a snag faller, he's called. It's a type of it's a person who cuts trees down. A faller is a person that cuts trees down. A snag faller is a person who was sometimes when the trees get knocked down, they get caught in branches. Oh, OK. Okay, and he goes in and he cuts cuts the branch off so they're not snagged anymore. Well, he did that and the tree came down on him. Mm-hmm. And so he ended up losing his left leg uh, about six inches below his knee. Mm-hmm. And he was having a really grievous time with, with the uh, uh, the whole process of, of not having this leg anymore. Mm-hmm. And, and so I got him on a gurney and, and he agreed to work with me. It took me five minutes and that man never had a problem with his leg again. And I ran into him about a year later, and he said to me, Monty, what you taught me in those five minutes, I healed so fast, and I was out of the WCB, and, and, and he's got his prosthetic. You can't even tell that he walks with a prosthetic because his, his walk is so natural. Awesome. All I did was I changed his understanding of who he is. Right. You know, it's kind of interesting because uh, I have a sister that uh, quite a number of years ago, she fell and broke her back. And was told that the doctor told her she'll never walk again. And the rest of us are thinking, no, 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 you don't know my sister. Because she automatically does a lot of what you're talking about. Yeah. It's just it's just who she is. Nobody taught her. She just knows those things uh, in, instinctively, I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah. And, and our goal now is to help more people to be that way. Yeah. So so what, what I wanted to do today is, is to, to do some different exercises for, for people who watch this podcast and that will help them to to be able to uh, b- build a better mind body relationship and, and generally just live life better. Mm-hmm. And and some of them are so simple. They're, they're absolutely ridiculous. Um, and and, and uh, so one of the first thing, well, it's absolutely the first thing that I teach people. What I'd like you to do right now, Nancy, is take a deep breath and, and let it out. I think you did it right. What did you move when you when you took a deep breath? From the, I know I learned from last time that you were. Oh, like, there we go. Has to come from from lower stomach. That's right. The lungs, right? I mean, up. that's absolutely correct. Most people breathe from their lungs. Right. And the problem with that is that there are toxins that are, are based in the in the lower part of our lungs that we get through our breathing. And when we only breathe with our lungs, that c- c- toxic air doesn't get removed. So when, when we con- when you continue our cycle of breathing, the new fresh air that we're bringing in is going through that toxic air again. Okay. The only way that we can move that that toxicity out of there is through moving uh, breathing using our abdominal muscles and we don't do that just with with um with with deep breathing we do it with all breathing right okay now um th- there's a a couple of other really fun tools uh, we, we we deal with what's called monkey mind so, so that's when we get in our head and and we can't get on with our life because we're too busy here okay so what happens energetically i'm not going to get into a whole bunch of, of stuff about chakras and stuff like this but basically we have seven major chakras in our body i work with a nine nine chakra system so those seven plus one that is 18 inches above 
and one that's 18 inches below. This one's called the star chakra, and the one below is called the, the earth chakra. Okay, so, so what happens when we get stuck here, monkey mind? Right. What happens is the crown chakra, I mean, yes, the crown chakra, which is right here, uh, it sits in the pituitary gland, which is the master gland of the body. It sits there and it becomes closed. The, the muscles of the, of the head actually will become tighter. And, and and so what happens is um, on, on, I can't show you on here, but on on the back uh, on your your spine coming down, right where you go into the let's get this to these are the thoracic okay yes a bit T so T two is is the, the the second chakra I mean the second vertebra after that that bump yeah okay that is the joining point between the head and the body. Okay. And, and, and so what happens is when we get monkey mind, the muscles close the area between the T2 and the crown chakra. And there we are. We're in the in the uh, the, the crown chakra. So it's going to get some water. <coughs> this is another lesson too. always drink lots of water. Yes. <laughs> We are 90% water, I think 90% water, and we need to make sure we stay up with that. Yeah. So, so what, 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 what we need to do, there's two, there's two different processes that we can use for, for eliminating monkey mind. Most people live in their head, and, and, and it's, it's one of the things that we need to shift because there are communication systems in our bodies. That's what the other chakras represent. The, they are frequencies of vibration that are communication systems that are below, beyond the information that our brain can, can pr process for us. Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, you have the, the, the thyroid is, is basically the communication system for our whole nervous system. And our adrenals is what makes us get up and move and so on like that. Mm -hmm. Well, on the, the non-physical level, they have related in uh, energy. And so we need to learn how to open those up and we have to keep this section open. So th there's, there's two ways to do it. Th this sounds really funny, but it, it works and you can do it in your mind if you're sitting on a bus or something like that where there's a bunch of people around. So what you do is you, you, you take your, take your fingers like this, your, first, your thumb and your first finger. Yep. Okay. Pretend there's a little piece of yarn in there. Okay. You're going to knit yourself a hat and you, now, I'm left-handed, so I have no idea which is my left or my right hand. But so we're, we're going to go with this. This is my right hand. Put it above your head like this and slowly turn your, your hand clockwise. Okay, just above your head. Maybe do it half a dozen times. And then take the end of the string and go boop, boop. Yep. And what you're doing is you're reconnecting that energy back to the star chakra. Okay. Okay, so what, so what happens is... The energy that goes into your, your crown chakra comes through through the air above us because this is your energy field. And it comes down into the star chakra and then comes down into the, the, the crown chakra and then flows down into the body. And we won't get into the rest of the stuff to do with chakras today because that's a different story. But anyway, when you do that, it allows the... Uh, the, the, the T2 to open up as well. And so you're allowing information to process back into the mind again. And you can do that. Just keep doing that and, and make sure that you breathe with it as you're doing it, because breathing is the key to everything. Right. So that that's one of the ways of very quickly get, getting rid of monkey mind and getting back into your body. Did, did you notice a sensation in your body at all when you did that, when you hooked back up? Well, I was paying, no, I didn't only because I'm paying attention to what you're asking me to do. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let, let's do it again. So and pay attention to what happens in your body. So just do it again. Okay. Half a dozen times, not too big. And then boop. And not, don't think I felt anything. Because what, what, what I feel when it happens is it's, it's like somebody's pouring icy water into my body. Okay. No, I and and I, I can feel the energy just go boom like this. And it goes right down my spine. And I find myself sitting more in my chair. Ah. Well, I'm going to practice it because I really need this. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Okay. Now, the, the other thing that, that is a really good exercise for it, I something happened the other day. And I, I can't quite place what it was. And it doesn't matter. But uh, I'm, I'm a Scorpio rabbit. So, so uh, nervousness is part of life for me. 
And sometimes things just get out of hand. And I would, I don't know what it was that I was so anxious. I was just uh, like this. And so I thought, okay, anxiety is easily manageable. All you have to do is choose to choose to manage it. And, and so what I did was I do, I, I do a process that is called square breathing. And what's, if what square breathing, have you, are you familiar with that at all? Pardon? Okay. Are you familiar with square breathing? Okay. So what square breathing is, is uh, you do that, you do a repetitive process called, and it's done in four second increments. Okay. okay? Breathe in for four seconds hold for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, hold for four seconds. And you just keep doing that. Okay. And, and for, the, the key to it is, and this is where I think people really have a hard time with it. You have to focus on the breath, not on the noise in your head. Okay. And, and so basically what you're doing, because you're focusing on doing breathe in, hold, breathe out, hold, breathe in, hold, and keep doing that. What you're doing is you're distracting yourself from, what's going on in your head. Right. Okay. Yeah. And th those are really, really great tools for dealing with uh, stress, with anxiety, that sort of stuff. See, th th this again is, is a big argument that I have with the, uh, the medical industry and the psychological industry and so on. It, it, it's almost like they don't want you to be able to manage your life yourself. Mm. They, they, they need to sell you drugs because there's big money in drugs. Yeah. So you go and take drugs to deal with your anxiety. No, learn to real learn how to manage it yourself. Yes. And and, and the tr the trick in learning to manage stress and anxiety is learn how to use the tools when you're not feeling that way. So that when when the the situation happens, the, you go, Monty told me to do square breathing. Right. And, and and you will learn. It, it's a process of retraining. It's exactly the same as, as when your brand new car arrives at the car dealership. What's the first thing they do to it? They tune it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. What we need to be constantly tuning ourselves. We're not told that. No, that's true. Yeah, we need to be constantly tuning ourselves. We are not, and th this is a very profound statement. And it, it, I mean, when, I, when I learned this, uh, I was a student at Douglas College in New Westminster, and I was doing a program called Human Development. What we were doing in the Human Development program was we were studying why people do what they do. So, so, and so this is where I learned about uh, core beliefs and so on like this. What we are not told is that we are not obligated to live out those core beliefs. We, we are not who we are expressing right now. Mm -hmm. We have the capacity to go, hey, you know what? I really don't agree with the way that I'm expressing my life at this moment. I need to step back and say, I need to do this different. And, and part of the way of doing that is to understand the belief system that we that caused us to do that now you don't have to go in and get all intellectual being intellectual is a bad thing to do with this kind of stuff mm -hmm. what you have to do is just recognize that you um you're, you're, you're you don't like the belief system that's operating in your life right now mm -hmm. so so um wh where this all develops from is and and psychologists agree with this Basically, you learn all of your core beliefs, well, not all, but about 90% of your core beliefs prior to your seventh birthday. So from the time that mom got pregnant until you're seven, so just about eight years, that's where you learn 90% of the beliefs that you have in your life. And as I have never met anybody that's had a perfect childhood. Right. And in fact, most of us have had pretty messed up childhoods. Yeah. And, and so we have developed belief systems out of that eight-year period that we still carry in our lives today. We still operate our lives based on what we figured out when we were six. Now, does that sound very smart? <laughs> what can I say, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so what, what we are able to do now is, is to recognize that how we react to life, if it doesn't work, we can step back and say, hey, I'm going to change that. And the way we do it is by doing it by, by taking the wh wh where what a belief is that has two components to it. There's the thought and there's the emotion. Right. 
Okay. Yeah. So what happens is w- when a person uh, is involved in a situation as an adult that is traumatic, what it does is their ego, which is in control, in control of all this stuff, recognize that event as being something similar to when they were a child. Okay. And so all they do is they, they just repeat what, the, the same uh, expression as they did when they were a child. So what we can do now uh, is, is um, go through the process and change the, the belief by right. taking the emotion out of it. Right. Okay. And we learn to use our emotions properly because emotions are the spice of life. We, we need to express emotion. Mm-hmm. We need to cry. We need to be happy. We need to feel joy. We need to be happy. What we don't need to do is have them powering negative belief systems. Yeah. Right. And, and the, the, no, I just want to say we're going to get getting close to the uh, end of the interview. So I just wanted to end it on a positive note. So <laughs> there are some wonderful positive notes. I have some videos on my website which is PowerfulYouPowerfulMe.com that uh, teach people how they can go through these processes. Okay. And they're simple to do. They're, they're about, uh, the, the visualizations are about 20, 25 minutes long. And learn the tool in, in the, the visual, in the video, so you can take it with you. Right. Yeah. And when, yeah. when you are in need of a situation where you want to make a shift, you've got the tool. So there's only two things you need to be able to have in order to, order to uh, change your life. One is willingness and the other one is practice. You make the choice in practice. And we are absolutely amazing people. And when we realize that we don't have to be trapped by our old beliefs, we can be even more amazing. Sounds great. Now that's a good note to end it, but um. Just to the audience, like uh, yeah. you've been listening to Monty Richards, and I guarantee he's going to be back on the show. Okay. <laughs> so everybody uh, have a good day. Uh, be nice. And um, thanks for watching the show. In the meantime, peace out, everyone. Take care, everybody. A sense of community to the wax of place to be. A sense of community when you're free. Rolling through the mountains, rolling through the valley, rolling through paradise with me. It's multicultural, you're sure to see it all. Chilliwack's a place to be, you'll see. Come party in the park, go dancing after dark. Chilliwack's a place to be, you'll see.